This video will explore the Pegasus model for abstractive summarization presented by researchers at Google AI. Abstractive summarization is one of the most exciting downstream tasks for natural language processing, where a model is asked to write a unique summary of a document or collection of source documents. A recent example that has gained interest in the machine learning research community is the TLDR dataset developed by researchers at the Allen Institute of Artificial Intelligence. They train a BART model to generate these one or two line summaries of machine learning research papers sourced from openreview.net. The current practice for this task would be to pre-train a language model by iteratively predicting a masked out token at the end of a sequence, a task known as self-supervised autoregressive language modeling. Then you would fine tune that model on a data set of labeled summaries and hope it generalizes to a new document or collection of documents and writes a novel summary for this new document that it hasn't seen in the training set. Pegasus shows this one size fits all pre-training then fine tuning paradigm doesn't cover all the tasks. They design a pretty simple new pre-training objective that's better aligned with downstream fine tuning for abstractive summarization. This video will explore this new technique and ablations of different factors in the algorithm. This video will explain Pegasus, a new pre-training technique from researchers at Google AI that's going to perform better for models that will then be fine-tuned for abstractive summarization. Abstractive summarization describes a model that writes a novel summary of a document or a collection of documents, compared to extractive summarization where it just returns the sentence or groups of sentences that contain the most information from the source documents. The current paradigm in natural language processing is to pre-train these language models using either autoregressive language modeling where we start with we, then predict hypothesize, then use we hypothesize to predict that, then we hypothesize that to predict using, and so on, or mass language modeling, which is used in BERT, where we might take this whole sequence and then mask out hypothesize, objective, and better, and then try to predict these masked out tokens. Another really common pre-training technique is Electra, which is a little bit of a more complicated adversarial framework where you have a generator and discriminator and a similar way of pre-training these language models. So the common paradigm is to pre-train these language models with one of these tasks, usually autoregressive language modeling, and then fine tune it and assume that that pre-training task is gonna work best for all sorts of different downstream natural language processing tasks like Yelp sentiment review classification, natural language inference, squad question answering, or even these abstractive summarization tasks. So the central hypothesis of Pegasus is that they can come up with a new pre-training objective that's gonna be better aligned with the downstream task of writing novel summaries of these collections of documents in abstractive summarization. The new pre-training task presented in Pegasus is gap sentences generation. So the idea is that we have this document or collection of documents and we're gonna mask out entire sentences, which is better aligned with the downstream task of abstractive summarization because it teaches the model how to aggregate this information to predict a massive amount of intermediate context compared to just mass language modeling where we just mask out uh, one token like mythical or uh, in this case, it names masking out names and using this smaller mask compared to masking out an entire sentence. So the whole idea in Pegasus is really not very complicated. It's just to mask out an intermediate sentence. And then there are all sorts of ablations that we're gonna go through in this paper about exactly the ratio of how many sentences compared to the overall length of document we're gonna mask out and how we're gonna search for which sentences to mask out. So figure one is the first experiment in the Pegasus paper. But really it's interesting because later on in the paper, they're actually gonna abandon this mass language modeling part of the task and saying that it doesn't really contribute to the results. But anyways, they present this combination of doing mass language modeling and the gap sentences generation. So what they're doing is they have the overall input. Pegasus is mythical, it is pure white, it names the model. So this is the overall input. And now we're going to add some noise to it in the denoising autoencoder way of training the mass language modeling and our gap sentences generation task. So we're going to completely take out the sentence, it is pure white, and replace it with mask one. And that's gonna be used for our transformer decoder, which is gonna take on this gap sentences generation task of reconstructing the masked out sentence. So our BERT half of this is going to also mask out intermediate tokens and replace them with mask two in what remains of the sequence to try and provide a little more signal to the model. Although as they go on in the paper, they're actually gonna find that this doesn't really work so well and it's better to just leave it with the mask one. A really great paper that came out recently in the pre-training then fine-tuning pipeline is the text-to-text -text transfer transformer, the T5 model. 
So in this paper, they're doing a large scale experiment, taking part all sorts of different details of this kind of pre-training and fine tuning paradigm for these transformer architectures. So Pegasus takes some inspiration from T5. So to read a quote from the paper, as in T5, Pegasus does not reconstruct full input sequences and only generates the masked sentences as a single output sequence. So this is one part of the T5 experiment where they're playing around with SpanBert. So SpanBert doesn't just mask a single token. So it's not just uh, thank you for inviting me to your party last week. It doesn't just mask out like thank you for and then it would leave inviting or have for and inviting as two separate masks. SpanBert replaces for and inviting with a single mask. And then what T5 finds that you can do that they're also going to do in Pegasus is the transformer model in the decoder half because it has this encoder where it encodes the full sequence and then it decodes this. And I highly recommend checking out this the illustrated transformer if you want to learn more about the details of exactly how self-attention works and these kind of models and different uh, encoder decoder compared to encoder only bird or decoder only GPT. But anyway, so back to this. So the idea is that you're only going to reconstruct the masked out sentence. So if it's masking out, it is pure white. In Pegasus, it's just going to decode, it is pure white. It's not going to reconstruct the entire Pegasus is mythical, it is pure white, it names the model, because it saves a lot of computation to only output the masked out sentence. So another interesting detail of Pegasus is that it's going to explore the data set used for pre-training. So we've seen this data set, the colossal and clean version of Common Crawl that's used in T5. It's this massive data set that just comes from like scraping the entire internet and getting all the text off the internet. Compared to this data set, they introduce huge news. So huge news is a collection of news and news-like websites that have been filtered based on these domains from high quality publishers and different things like high school newspapers. But the idea is that you're gonna be pre-training this uh, model with the Pegasus objective on this news article data set compared to just the entire internet. So they're gonna see if this results in a better performance by having kind of like a more, not necessarily in domain because it's still gonna be a pretty huge transfer to go from all of the news articles that exist on the internet to a downstream task like summarizing archive papers or something like that. So in addition to exploring the huge news data set for pre-training, this paper Pegasus is gonna explore a lot of different downstream abstractive summarization data sets. So we pre-train it on huge news and then we fine tune it on these different summarization data sets like extreme summarization, CNN, Daily Mail News, Newsroom, GigWord, Archive, PubMed, Big Patent, WikiHow, and then Reddit, TIFU. So I recommend checking out the Hugging Face NLP library for this. There's the NLP viewer, but if you go into Hugging Face's NLP viewer, a lot of these data sets are pretty big, so they, they won't load into the NLP viewer. So you have to kind of load it into Python and then uh, you know like index it to start visualizing this data set. So quickly, these are some slides that I recently made for a presentation of the TLDR data set from researchers at the Allen Institute of Artificial Intelligence, where they're looking at summarizing these uh, papers that are on open review, which is this website that's used for submitting these machine learning papers to the ICLR conference. And they use this to construct a data set for you know using these TLDR summaries of these abstract introductions and conclusions of machine learning papers like the one we're going through right now. So some of these data sets that are explored in these abstract of summarization include XSUM. An example of this is you have this document and you have this short summary, or you have CNN Daily Mail where you have a bit of a longer generation. So the key is looking at the difference in the average summary length in these data sets and you see the difference between uh, CNN Daily Mail being about 50 words compared to extreme summarization, which is 20. And TLDR is also a case of really extreme summarization where you have a a really compressed summary that you're trying to target from a lot of text. So there's a lot of different interesting details of looking through all these data sets. They're definitely, uh, I think you can see in the results later on too that you know they vary enormously in how many samples we have in addition to the compression ratio of these source documents like an entire uh, PubMed or archive scientific paper into the target sequence length that we're trying to summarize them into with these transformer models. So with the new gap sentences generation pre-training objective, the authors are gonna explore a lot of different factors of variation with designing this new pre-training task. So similar to papers like T5, they're gonna first explore this on the small scale setting where you have uh, a model with about half the parameters, about 200 million parameters, and it's also trained with much smaller batch sizes on a smaller data set, then you scale it up, double the parameters, about 560 million parameters in the Pegasus model, 
and is trained with a much larger batch size as well. So they're gonna use a smaller scale experiment setting to ablate these different factors with the new pre-training task. So the first thing is gap sentences ratio. It's a similar idea to mask rate in BERT with mass language modeling. How many of these sentences are we gonna mask out? If we have these long source documents, like imagine the TLDR data set from the Allen Institute, we have the abstract introduction and conclusion of a paper like this paper. And how many of the sentences do we want to mask out? It's like 15%, 30%, 50%. And so obviously the lower that we, you know, the less these sentences we mask out is going to be more computationally efficient because also, as we mentioned earlier, with it, taking inspiration from T5, we're only going to have to decode the masked out sentence. So the less that we mask out, the easier, the faster this is going to run in our pre-training. But then also the more that we mask out, the harder this task is going to be. So then the next things are strategies for selecting the gap sentences. Do we just take the uh, like the top sentence? Do we take like a random sentence or do we try to do some kind of n-gram overlap that kind of is a metric of defining which of these sentences is like the most unique to the overall document? Then we can also look at this thing of additionally using mass language modeling, which is uh, this idea of also taking the sequence and masking it out in the encoder half and then passing that encoder representation to the decoder. So hopefully maybe that provides some additional information as well, but they're going to find that that doesn't really work better than just uh, leaving it with just the mask one and then encoding that and passing it to the decoder. But then they're also going to look at um, the pre-training corpus, the C4 versus huge no news, and then the tokenizer vocabulary using byte pair encoding compared to the sentence piece unigram. And they're going to find the unigram is better, but I didn't really cover it because I don't really understand why the tokenizer vocabulary is specific to this pre-training objective. So the first ablation is exploring which sentences should we mask out. We have these source documents and we're trying to construct these masks. Should we have some kind of search algorithm for which sentences get masked out? So we can either just select random sentences to mask out, denoted in the green. We could take the lead, which would just be the opening sentence, or we could do some kind of n-gram overlap or some search for the most informative sentences to try to mask out and make the task harder for our pre-training objective. So their results find that using this kind of a search does tend to outperform random selection of the sentences to mask out, although the difference doesn't seem to be too dramatic, and it would be a bit of a more implementation uh, challenge to implement these kinds of n-gram overlap algorithms compared to just randomly selecting the mask. But in all likelihood in the current state of natural language processing anyways, I'd say Pegasus is more of just something to be aware of. If you're taking a pre-trained transformer off the shelf, from something like the Hugging Face Transformers library, and you're trying to see use it for your abstractive summarization downstream task. Rather, I wouldn't think too many people would be interested in really reading into this little difference between a random sentence masking and then having some kind of technique of searching for which sentence to mask out. These are the results of exploring the percentage of sentences we should mask out in the overall document. Generally, masking out 30% of the sentences seems to perform the best, as well as 45% and similar to 15%, where 15% is more computationally efficient and 75% would be really masking out an enormous amount of the document and perhaps there isn't even enough signal left to reconstruct the uh, masked out sequences anyways. These are the results of the ablation comparing the C4 common crawl corpus with the huge news data set. So this ablation kind of showcases the whole idea of this paper Pegasus. So the pre-training and then fine-tuning pipeline in NLP still has some variation to be improved with the pre-training side of this. So we see, say your downstream task was XSUM, you would get a pretty huge benefit by pre-training on huge news compared to C4, although it's not like huge news is better for all of the abstractive summarization tasks. So we're seeing this kind of no free lunch theorem idea where similar to this idea of Pegasus introducing a new pre-training objective, not autoregressive language modeling or mass language modeling or something like Electra, we're introducing this slightly different pre-training uh, task. We're just masking out sentences, not some crazy different idea. And then we're also seeing this gain in the data set that you're pre-training with. So depending on your summarization data set or what you're working on, the pre-training and fine-tuning pipeline is still open for exploration with the pre-training half of this. Although again, it's more likely than not that you're going to be taking this model off the shelf from a hugging face transformer implementation or some pre-trained model because this is really expensive to train models at this scale. These are the results of the Pegasus Large pre-trained on the huge news and C4 datasets compared to the previous state of the arts on abstractive summarization metrics, these different uh, Rouge or R-O-U-G-E scores with different things like uh, the way that they're measuring kind of, I think it's like a true positive rate, false positive rate weighting kind of 
F1 metric, but anyway, so these are the different metrics of the previous state of the arts, and we're seeing that Pegasus is improving on this. So Pegasus is a pretty large scale model. It's about 560 million parameters in the large scale, uh, trained in a big way with these 8,000 uh, batch sizes, trained on this big, huge news and C4 data sets, and it's improving on the state of the art with this pretty simple new pre-training objective. This is comparing uh, just the base setting, which is a smaller scale experiment that is used to ablate the different factors of the Pegasus. Like as we mentioned, the uh, percentage of the sentences that are masked out, the strategy for selecting the sentences, and then these little things. So it's comparing the transformer base, which is uh, I think just the standard architecture, maybe just mass language modeling compared to the gap sentences generation. You see a pretty big difference on the performance for downstream summarization data sets. So you can look through this and see which data sets, particularly this has a huge gain on. You see WikiHow going from say 28 to 41. The most interesting result from Pegasus is the performance gains on zero shot and low resource summarization tasks. And this is much more realistic for most of our interests with customized data sets for abstractive summarization. Because could you imagine trying to construct your own summarization data set of this scale? For example, I'd be interested in the TLDR generating summaries of these papers that I'm trying to read to make these machine learning paper summary videos, but to construct a data set of 18,000, the smallest one in this data set, of labeled pairs where I write a summary for the source document is just ridiculous. And you know, most of these applications that we'd be interested in, whether it's summarizing sports articles or you know, newspaper or Twitter feeds or anything, constructing massive data sets is always gonna be a challenge. And we always want things like data augmentation or successful low resource zero shot transfer. So a quote from the paper is that with just a hundred examples, Pegasus large, so Pegasus when it's pre-trained with this new pre-training objective on the huge news data set and then with the little factors in the ablation study. So with just a hundred examples, Pegasus large could be fine tuned to generate summaries at comparable quality to transformer base, the original model, trained on the full supervised data sets ranging from 20,000 to 200,000 examples. So we're getting a similar performance of the dotted lines to note the previous state of the art with just 10, 100, 1,000 or 10,000 uh, labeled examples. And obviously we always wanna get away from having to construct these massive labeled data sets. These are the results of having human evaluators go through the different summaries written by humans and written by different variants of the Pegasus large models on different low resource settings where it's fine tuned on 10 examples, 100 examples, 1000 examples and full supervision. And you can see the comparison where it looks like the Pegasus large model is writing better summaries than humans on the extreme sum and the CNN daily mail summarization data sets, but not quite yet on the Reddit TIFU data set. So these are some of the examples of the summaries written by the Pegasus large model compared to the supervised target. So this is some article and then you see the difference between Rangers say midfielder Joey Barton will return to full-time training following a club imposed suspension compared to the model written the Pegasus is a summary of Rangers midfielder Joey Barton is to return to full-time training after being suspended by the club. So you can imagine if this was like a Turing test it would be basically impossible to tell which one of these was written by the model and which one was the supervised target or you know the one written by the human. So you can see more examples of this in different uh, articles going through the paper and you can see the comparison with this automated metric the Rouge score that's used to evaluate the similarity between what the model produces and then the you know the target to produce. So this is the XSUM data set. You can also see the results on CNN Daily Mail. Again, CNN Daily Mail is a bit of a longer uh, target compared to extreme summarization where you have just this one sentence. The TLDR data set of the open review papers from the Allen Institute is similar to this kind of data set where it's just kind of like this one sentence compared to something like CNN Daily Mail where you have a bit more to write. So they show other examples and you can go through the paper, the CNN Daily Mail, and it's also the newsroom data set, all these other things that you can look through to see if you wanna see like exactly what this model is summarizing these articles as. Another really popular model for abstractive summarization is BART, the bidirectional autoregressive transformer. So BART has a similar encoder decoder type of architecture and it seems in their paper that they did a similar ablation with token masking. When I first read BART, I thought that uh, a, B, C, D, and E denoted sentences in the document. And so token masking was kind of describing this idea of the gap sentence generation in Pegasus, but there's still probably little details with the implementation, like the ablations in Pegasus, or maybe the large scale setting up, kind of little details that might make Pegasus different from BART. So BART explores all these different pre-training tasks like token masking, 
uh, sentence permutation where you'd scramble the sentences in the document, rotating the document and text infilling and token deletion. So different ways of constructing this kind of denoising autoencoder task where we're trying to figure out how we want to add noise to the original sequence to best train these denoising autoencoders. Another interesting paper, if you're exploring abstracted summarization, is generating Wikipedia by summarizing long sequences. So this paper is looking at this Wikisum dataset where you get the all of these different articles that are referenced in a Wikipedia article, as well as like the top 10 search results from searching the term, and then using this as the source and then the target, so like the X, Y pairs, for training these transformer models. But they have this intermediate pipeline where first they use an extractive, uh, you know, extractive summarization model, like it could be something as simple as like TFIDF or some kind of off the shelf information retrieval system that gets out kind of the most informative sentences or subsets of all of this massive uh, X pair to feed into the transformer context. Because we, we have this problem with transformers where we can't attend over a massive sequence. Some models like the reformer or transformer XL compressive transformer are taking these steps towards attending over some massive input sequence like this. But the current self attention implementation has this quadratic complexity in the input sequence length. So if you try to attend over the entire collection of all the reference articles and the top 10 search results for the term, you would just run out of uh, space complexity. Or you know, even if you had all the memory in the world, it would still be massive computation to be doing that kind of computation for the self-attention layers throughout the model. Pegasus has a really interesting hypothesis that there isn't this kind of one size fits all idea with the pre-training then fine tuning pipeline which is kind of the antithesis of the ideas in GPT-3. This kind of language models are few shot learners and you can just do autoregressive language modeling on an 175 billion parameter transformer and do it on a massive data set and then it can just perform all these tasks. But it still is looking like even at 175 billion parameters, which is massive and it has a huge gain in the language modeling task. So this is the Lambada data set of language modeling. It has a huge gain. This previous state of the art is the Turing NLG model from Microsoft that has 17 billion parameters itself, and you're seeing a, an 8% jump. So it's still getting better at language modeling, and it is getting better at the downstream task, but it's still interesting to think, will we scale this up all the way, and will this continue to kind of work in the zero shot way, or fine tuning is still, this kind of idea of Pegasus is showing that maybe there's a better way to search for the pre-training. It's definitely a lot more practical with the current state of like the hardware for doing this. So it's still in the state of natural language processing, it, I guess there isn't this one size fits all pre-training task that you want all your downstream tasks, like things like the super glue benchmark, has tasks like Yelp sentiment review, natural language inference, question similarity, and then comparing that to something as different as abstract summarization. So there's still like no free lunch theorem. It's, it's still searching through this different uh, ways that we construct the pre-training task, the domain data set. We saw that gain from huge news compared to C4 and little things like the percentage of these sentences that are masked out can have a huge difference as well. Thanks for watching this video exploring the Pegasus pre-training task developed by researchers at Google AI. Pre-training the models with this gap sentence generation task performs better when you fine tune it for abstractive summarization data sets where you're trying to generate a novel summary from a source document or collection of documents. Hopefully from this video you got a sense of the implementation details Things like how this idea in the text-to-text -text transfer transformer T5 model introduces only decoding the masked out part and how that saves a little bit of computation and these little other factors like the ratio of sentences that are masked out, the difference between the C4 and huge news data set, and then all of these different data sets and particularly the gains on the low resource setting where we see this new Pegasus pre-training objective results in massive performance gains when you only have say 100 or 1000 labeled examples and that's really important because whatever you're interested in your customized data set for the Pegasus model or for abstractive summarization, you don't want to have to construct a labeled data set of 10,000 summaries of these documents or source collections of documents. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.